Construction Dollar Fair Company is May 21st, 2018, the time is now 10.35 in the morning. The time is now 10.35 in the morning. It is Saturday, May 23rd, 2015. I'm at Lake Yale right now. I'm at Lake Yale right now.
price that we could not pay, Lord, you sent your son to die on the cross for us and for our sins. So, Father, I pray that we never lose sight of that. We never lose sight of the magnitude and the greatness of your beauty and, and that cost, Lord. And that our only response is just to fall on our feet and just to worship. Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done. Lord, we thank you so much for what you're continuing to do in our lives. And Lord, I just pray that our desire just becomes to, to seek after you and just to know you more in, in the event that we just come to worship you for who you are. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this time that we just learn and, and just be in your presence, Lord. Lord, we know that you're with us at all times. So Lord, I just pray that we, we don't forget that. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for your love. We may be glorified. Back to my cabin.
Yeah, I guess so. What, what did you get here? Uh, today. Today? No, I want to sit by Pat. <laughs> you want to sit by Alan, right? Alan can sit there. Alan can sit there. Alan can sit there. I sit here. I sit here. Alan sits there. We've got no more room. We've got one more guy coming out. Slightly. There you go. Just so we don't have any insects going in. So you want to sit by Alan, right? Let's see, we've got a few more, uh, few more folks from last time. I'll try to get the names this time around. This, uh, let's go around this way, just real briefly, maybe names. Um, uh, anything else beyond the name? Any, any one thing. Your name and any one thing that you would like to uh, to add to this. So. <sighs> Here we go. Uh, we'll go this way. Uh, my name is Norman. I'm uh, from Orlando. Can you stand? You can stand, right? <laughs> no, you can stand. <laughs> that's. that's <laughs> I forgot his name. What's his name? What? We gotta name? find out soon. It's Mark. We'll find out Mark. We'll yeah. Sorry, I wasn't being sarcastic. Before. 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 I wasn't being sarcastic. Before. I'm Jen Chen from University of Florida, Florida State University, Nova Southeastern University, and Illinois Institute of Technology. All right, and All right. next, uh, I'm Pat. Uh, yes, professional student. And I'm Asian. Wow. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> no. I didn't know that. Oh, I left out one more. New Mexico State University. Tulsa. New Mexico State no, University. Oh, I should know that. <laughs> Professional student. Yeah, Professional rich student. Right, yeah.
Eugene from Naples, Florida. I sent you. Uh, I'm Donald from Jacksonville. Thomas from Fort Murray. I'm George from Tampa. Uh, we don't have to just say where we are from. Yeah, you can, uh, you can okay. just know where you want to go. Or, uh... I'm Brian, I'm making wine at home. Ooh, and it is. Uh, uh, <laughs> time to come over. No, so I'm, Alan, Alan, uh, I'm Alan from Tallahassee. Tonight. I'm Ben, and I'm going to stay censored. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight in the cabin. Uh, I uh, enjoyed 10 years living in South Korea. So. Oh. Onion Haseyo. Well, we've got uh, about a long time. So. An hour. <laughs> uh, uh, I think half hour, actually. Half hour. Right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So. <clears throat> so that's uh, just the, if you have your little booklet. <laughs> By the way, I noticed you guys got together for your uh, morning devotional, so congratulations on that. I had learned it. <laughs> I understood I didn't need to leave that, so I'm glad you took care of it. We, um, it was it uh, Alan and I kind of worked together outside. Um, <clears throat> on page eight is uh, this discussion for, uh, for the second session. I thought I'd do uh, right off. Let's... Um, just to get a picture for maybe what we can cover, it, it's, in my experience in a time like this, if you try to cover everything, it, it just becomes kind of rote and standard, it's my, my, it's my thoughts. So uh, why don't we get a look at some of the things we can cover to kind of run through it real quickly and then uh, go up to the beginning and uh, kind of work our way through on a number of things. So uh, then would you read, let's read the first one, the second one, just read it around and as far as we go. Uh, so the first one? Yep. What did you learn about God's character? Um, Alan, the next one. Uh, what do we deserve because of our sin? What does God desire to give us that we do not deserve? What do you need to confess and repent of? What help does God give to those who repent and believe in Him? Hmm. At the end of the day, we need to choose one or two paths. In one, I don't believe what you're telling me. I want to live for myself do things on my, my own way and be my own boss. If this is you, you must investigate carefully because if it's true, you are rebelling against God and the consequences of this decision are a matter of life and death. Two, I do believe that and thank Jesus for saving me from God's wrath for my sin. I want God to be the boss of my life, to do things his way, to live completely for him, by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in me. It's okay. I'm not sure. I'm still trying to figure out which figure, try to figure out which path. Feel free to take any time to talk to a leader, to pray, and or to ask and seek God. Just remember, Jesus does not give us a third way. Take some time to pray for one another. It's a good one. Hello. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll can, you can, can you stand? Can you stand? I just stand, no problem. Okay. No, no, no. no. Yeah, bring that chair up this way and then I'll bring it. I think it's will you stand? Will you stand by me? Stand by me. Stand by me. The pretenders. Just, uh, you, were you able to sit in on the last meeting? I was in the adult section. Oh, okay. Oh, I want to see how this youth goes. Sounds good. Uh, we um, we heard a message and we're just going to have a brief discussion. So, no, go ahead. Yeah. Join. I just watch and listen. Sounds good. So, um, <clears throat> what would you say was the, uh, if you learned something about God's character on this one, what would it be? I knew I should have brought an extra chair. I was going to do it. Can you stand? Can you stand? Yeah, sure. No, right. <laughs> 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 I can stand. Can you stand? Can you stand? Can you stand? What, Bob? Yeah. You're just hitting me. You're hitting me. Okay. 
<laughs> There's not really a bug on you guys. It's dead. We reached the maximum. We reached the maximum occupancy. Back on topic, uh, character. What did you learn of God's character? I killed an ant today. Didn't run God's character. Oh, okay. God's character. It's good. And today was uh, was anything emphasized more than anything else? It's kind of funny. There is the hot oil, hot oil and water and expression about God's holiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, brought out a response. Was it? I mean, it, there's a real reaction there, isn't there? Oh. God's holiness. Are there any things that over the years uh, God's impressed you with in this realm of God's holiness? Complete otherness, complete otherness. I think the fact that we can recognize sin or evil means there must be some concept of a, of a holiness. So, how many of us think that we are very holy? Think what? How many of us think that we are very holy? Like we are the, yeah. you know, like we are blameless <laughs> and we are like the best person in the world. How many of best us? Best person in the world. Nope. Patrick. Two. Best person or holy. Pat you. Nope. Oh, that's true. That's true. But are you asking best person? Or so, so, so if you think that you're not good enough to be here, or you're not good enough, what makes you think that you're not good enough? We all have sin. Sin keeps us separates us from God. We, we're not good enough in, in our own. How do we know that we have sin? Jesus, God said, yeah. yeah, because. Because oh, in some ways we do know about God's holiness. I mean, even even the deepest, darkest people in Africa that have, have never heard the word, they know that they are sinners because they can see from nature. <laughs> that, you know, they are bad and they need to be saved. And in that, they they see God's holiness in that. Right. So I think that all of us we must have. I mean, if. If you did not say, you know, I'm good, I'm great, I'm like one of the best person or holy person in the world. I mean, in that, in that, in, if you did not say that, oh my God. instead you think about, I'm actually not good enough, there's something in me, there's, there's some weakness in me, there's some, some wrongs in me that I need to set it right. I think in that way, actually, that's, I mean, implicitly, we do know God's holiness. And it's because of that, that helps us to see our imperfection through that way. So I, I mean, Brian, you said that I cannot see God's holiness in the world. 
but you look at yourself and you are able to say that I'm, I'm not good enough. God's holiness is actually in me to help me to see that. That's my that's my takeaway. I got a look. Is anybody familiar with Jeremiah chapter two verse thirteen? Jeremiah chapter two verse thirteen. If not, take a somebody turn to it. Jeremiah two thirteen. Probably fits in with a little bit of the idea of uh, the thing that came out today or last night. Uh, Jesus said this is in Matthew um, 6 you've heard that it was said don't kill but I tell you if you even hate someone or speak evilly of them you see this kind of a I I don't know if it's a redefining of sin sin has always been sin I think the Pharisees the scribes a human self-righteous human attempts to redefine sin but uh, it's good sin has to be defined in terms of God and his holiness so Jeremiah 2.13, Timothy, did you find that? Did you say 2.13 or 3? Uh, Jeremiah 2, 13, chapter 2, verse 13. Uh, Timothy, do you have that? Did I get the name right? Is it Timothy? Oh, Thomas, I'm sorry. Thomas, I got the T right. Uh, I'm sorry, Thomas. We talked last night with Thomas. Then. Uh, could you read that one? Chapter 2, verse 13. Yeah. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken the spring of living water. And they have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. When you look at that, uh, it says, my people, who is the my in that category? When he's speaking, who is the my, or who's that referred to? Pardon me? God. God. So, my, my people, God's saying my people, and what does, uh, how does, what does God say about his people? Not a trick, not a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> two evils. Two evils, yeah. In some passage it says two evils, and Thomas has said two sins. That's what we're talking about, sin. So what's the, what does it say is, uh, well, before we ask that question, how does God describe himself? In this passage. Spring of, living spring, water. Of the living, spring of living water. And so he, he said, I'm the spring of living water. He talks about his people and he says they've committed two sins. And what's the first one? They've dug their own uh, well before that. I think that's the second one, isn't it? <laughs> they've forsaken me. What does it mean to forsake God? You've turned away from him. And what you've turned away from, as God characterizes himself as living water, I'm life. I'm life itself. And what you've done is you've turned away from me. It, you know, it, it, we don't start with, I committed murder, I lusted, I lied, I stole. Those are, those are really just manifestations of this, of this sin. So my sin is to turn away from God, is to disregard God. God, um, you know, it may be like we saw last night, God is the creator, he's the... Uh, author, he's the authority, and if we turn our back on that, you know, we're going our own way. Interestingly, so the first sin, uh, to me, a big picture of what sin is, is to turn your back on this creator, holy, life sustaining, life giving God. When you do that, what, what, is the, what is the second sin it leads to? As it's described there, again, it's not a trick question. <laughs> you, yeah, you dig your own cisterns. Uh, what does that characterize? What does that represent? It's kind of symbolic. It doesn't mean somebody's out digging a, a hole in a rock. It, it means instead of going to God for the living water, they're trying to find it elsewhere. You're trying to find, trying to find a secondary substitute. Trying to save yourself. Yeah. And. Um, where, where in the New Testament do you find that kind of being uh, pictured out? Can you think of a illustration in the Gospels where that gets pictured out? Think of living water. Samaritan woman. Samaritan woman, exactly. If you... Uh, if you're familiar with John 4, uh, Jesus goes, uh, you know, he heads kind of <laughs> straight towards this location. There's this woman who uh, uh, Jesus says, uh, give me a drink of water. Um, then 
she says, why are you even talking to me? And then uh, he says, if you knew who I was and who was asking for this, if you knew what I had to offer, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Do you remember how that goes? And uh, at first she doesn't, she doesn't have a clue. Uh, he mentioned something again. He says, if you would come to me, you would have eternal life. You'd have to spring of water welling up to eternal life. What was your response after that, do you know? Give me this water so that I don't have to come here in the well again. Perfect, uh, Mark. Yeah, he says, she says, give me this water. Did she understand what he's offering, do you know? No. She didn't have a clue, actually, still didn't have a clue in my opinion, but she said, I'll take it. And then at that point, what did Jesus say to her? I'm, I'm cheating. What's that? You're, you can cheat. <laughs> <laughs> That's not cheating. That's using, using your resources. <laughs> what, um, what is it? Jesus asked her to, uh, to get her house there. He says, go bring your husband. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of joke around with people. What's that all about? Is the water too heavy and they should need your husband to carry it around? Or does he have the credit card to pay for this water? <laughs> what, what, what's the purpose of that? Why does, God, why does Jesus say, go call your husband? I'll tell you my thought. In that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I really would think what he's doing is he's, he's kind of pulling out this picture of Jeremiah 2.13 of you have to understand the holiness of God and, and when you've turned from the holiness of God and, and the satisfaction that God can give you, the life that God can give you you're off on your own, you're digging these cisterns, broken cisterns that hold the water scripture, I can't read to you the scripture would say it but I Think you could end up agreeing with me. I, I see this woman thinking, you know what, if I just marry Mr. Handsome, my, my life is going to be satisfying. So she marries Mr. Handsome and it doesn't work. So get rid of Mr. Handsome and marry Mr. Strong. She marries Mr. Strong and Mr. Strong is Mr. Mean. So I don't want that. Get rid of, uh, marry Mr. Nice, but Mr. Nice is Mr. Weak. And just on and on. It's a picture of it's a picture of if we turn our back from God, where do you have to go? Where do you go? You're just left to your own self plan, your self concept of how can I, how can I be satisfied in life? And you know, God doesn't describe that as a mistake. He doesn't describe it. Well, that's bad luck. He he describes it as sin. That's sin. So it just occurs to me, you know, as we think of. God's holiness, he's just totally other, he's totally uh, set apart, and he's the only one who satisfies anything directed otherwise, God calls sin, and uh, you know, you know, as we, you know, we find it all in that category, apart from Christ, <laughs> you know, the wonderful thing about that woman at the well, and there, I think, you know, our, our little skit depicted that Christ draws you through God, but Basically, the first thing is to point out I'm separate from God. God. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. When we're aware of that, then there's a, a, a drawing, how can I be right with God? Um, I don't know if you... Uh, maybe I, I don't know if I did with where Tommy was, but when I came in my life to be aware of my sin, yeah, I had a concept of sin, but I don't think I had a concept of how... how, how pervasive and how... That struck me. I thought, yeah, okay, I'm sinful, but I can clean that up. That just depicts more of the sin. I mean, there's, there's a pride in this now. No, I can't do it. It's not. It's not. I, I need a savior. I need a, a total. I don't need a part savior. It's not me half and him half. It's the full savior. Thoughts related to that, or so, quick question: um, Holiness does have a meaning of set apart. So, how do you think we can um, live it up? In our life? As a second 
Christian. I mean, we, we do our thing. We do our tanks, gas, we do our lunch. And that's not a question for me, that's for everyone. Wow, wow. 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 You, he's exploded. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm like, Troy to your first. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think of. Uh, Would it be good to look at Ephesians 2 for a minute, maybe? I, I, I find some answer to that. Ephesians 2, if you want to turn it up. Uh, going to the Bible for answer. Uh, that's, I, do that's I, do, I, do, I do better. I do better. I do better with the Bible. <laughs> Ephesians 2. <clears throat> Actually, it could be um, 1 through 10. I don't know if I mentioned 1 through 10. Patrick, would you up to be up for uh, yep. Ephesians, uh, should I take, should I read the whole thing or just the whole You want to do 1 through 5 and okay. uh, somebody else do 6 through 10? Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in, all, in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at, at one at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. That's five. How many of yeah. <clears throat> and raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming <laughs> ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is a gift of God not a result of works so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in with him. In answer to the question, one thing I'm seeing is, again, it's this picture of, apart from Christ, I'm dead. You know, I, there was a point in my life where I, I think I became aware of sin, but I thought, okay, I'm going to clean it up now. I'm going to clean up my life. I'm going to do something. And God's still at work saying, Charlie, you don't, you don't know what that that depth of that sin, you know what it is that you're dead in it and you have no works of your own and you know, that's what has drawn me to I trust Christ as my Savior it's, it's His grace, it's His life, it's His forgiveness I have that and so if life comes from Him then to live it out, I just, I can't live it out apart from Christ, from the Holy Spirit in my life uh, which uh, the Holy Spirit is using God's word, he's using other Christians, uh, just this picture of a full Christian life. But those are thoughts that come to my mind. <clears throat> I guess I wonder if, uh, <clears throat> I wonder if Tommy's illustration of the um, getting bigger with was there a clarity to that or any uh, question or thought comments Sort of related um, the diagram that he had up there as like a hot air balloon. Um, because it, if you think about it, like a hot air balloon, you know, like you rise, but you, you don't really know where you where you're going, except um, but dependent on like your altitude. So like, um, based on your altitude, you pick up you know like wind speeds and it'll 
you shift your directions wherever you want to go. And so I sort of took that as like my spiritual walk. You know, like wherever I am on on the ladder of my spiritual walk, God is always like, you know, wherever I am, He's always like pushing me off into um, a path that will help me grow. You know, draw closer to Him. Because like in the Bible it says that God won't tempt me more than what I what I can bear. And so in the same way, um, like it says, as you go through time, you become more aware of God's holiness. Just based on your altitude, he's always like pushing you, you know, in that direction of, you know, seeking Christ and seeking the glory of God. According to that, the diagram is you uh, became more aware of God's holiness. What, what seemed to follow that? you became more aware of your own sinfulness and then as a consequence of that <laughs> what, what was the, the third thing there what was between those two lines and, uh, and so what was happening to the cross? Getting bigger. Getting bigger. They get bigger. And then I think Tommy says it's, it's not just, I think it just, it's bigger in our awareness. The cross has always been as big as it's ever been. It's, Jesus accomplished everything on that cross. But I, I don't know about you, but for me, you know, it's just the more I, the more I see God's holiness, the more I see my sin, the more aware I'm, um, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. So. I think it gets bigger, you know, the closer you get to it, the closer yeah. to your realization that you are a sinner and you need it, the closer you get to the cross, the bigger it gets. So you're aware of, like, again, yeah. I, God never gets bigger. He's never been small, but in our in our thoughts, in our minds, perhaps that's the case. So as we see God's holiness, we see our sin much more. I'm ever more just drawn to Christ died for all sins, not not just the ones up to my point of salvation, but all sins along the way. Well, that picture also come, connects. <laughs> that picture also reminds me of a verse in John 3.30. John 3.30. He must increase what I must do. And that, I, I mean, while you're talking about holiness, I always... And in connection with John the Baptist, I was thinking about serving God. Yes. He must increase, I must decrease. It's a dragonfly, right? Anything else as you look at either of these questions, or I don't know if you took some notes or have notes in your mind, but. Uh, <clears throat> As you think back on that message or thoughts that God brought to your mind, how there any more come up? Number four, um, what do you need to confess and repent of? Um, if you took uh, <clears throat> in that Ephesians 2 passage we looked at, Paul would, Paul would have lumped himself with these Ephesians, and he, sometimes I think he used the word I and then the word we. He just identifies that, and he said there was a point apart from Christ, there was death, there was darkness, there was no light, then there was having trusted Christ, uh, born again, a new life, a new, uh, living in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light. So there's two things. If you think of somebody on the prior side of the cross and somebody on the post side of the cross, what, what would it be for the one on the prior side of the cross? What would, what would that look like in terms of confession and repentance? Clarify that question. Um, hmm. 
so you've got, um, see we're moving this way, here's the cross, over here you don't know Christ. Uh, Are you talking about historical? Yeah, in your own history. Or, yeah. Oh, no. So yeah, a person who is not, uh, not born again, a person apart from Christ, the, as we saw in the Ephesians 2, he's dead in his sins and in the kingdom of darkness. It's at the point of meeting Christ, the uh, uh, confession of sin, the repentance, born again, and then there's a new life. So, is there only repentance on one side of this cross, or do we see it on both sides? I propose two, and if it's on, on this uh, prior side, what what is what is that repentance? I don't know if that clarifies. You know? I'm trying to clarify the question. Yeah, so I, I think he's asking, like, are we still, like, do we still have a need to repent even after the cross? Yeah, I, I, I'm actually on both sides of it. I wanted to talk about this side and then about that side. So what what does that, to, for someone on this side, they they wouldn't even declare that I'm a Christian. They'd say, I, I'm opposed to that. Uh, but every, anyone who's now over here started over there. It's even my... Uh, so what did that repentance look like? What what would that what would have been going on in that person's <coughs> mind? Any idea? Of course, that's a pretty muddy question. Like in coming to know Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like a repentance of like your your there's like old life and new life. So prior to and except like down you know on the left side of the class it's like giving up your old sinful life and making a declaration that I am now. Uh, entering this new life, and the flip side would be that um, when you are a Christian, that you uh, repent because of um, God. Like in Romans, it says that God, Christ's um, kindness is meant to lead you to repentance as opposed to a justification of sin. So on the other side, it's like I'm repenting because I belong to Christ and, and I'm sinful. Yeah, so. Thanks, Alan. Any other expression? I, I guess I may even picture that. Uh, you may picture Nicodemus or that woman at the well. I, I, that woman at the well, I think she would repent of, I've, I've, I've not been seeking God at all. <laughs> I've been seeking my own my own way is my own life and to repent of that and then to trust Christ I think it's clear we see that woman trusting Christ she went on into living a Christian life I think of Nicodemus I think of in his case he would have maybe he would repent of a self-righteous life I, he, he may have said I'm looking for God in fact probably not he's just lifting up his own self-righteous things so to repent of that would be I am dead in my sins. I have nothing to offer. I repent of that thought and I turn to Christ. was talking about Christ being that person laying out his life for us. And then you think about it, and it's like, man, so if there's truly no greater love that I can uh, display than to lay down my own life for that of a hmm. brother or not somebody else, then, then what about the creator who is not, uh, who is without sin, laying down his life for somebody who is, who is for somebody who has sin? And not only that, but like that in that video, that Chandler was talking about, um, he, that the Creator is laying down His life for us and absorbing our sin in, in doing so. So, if I lay down my life for my brother, uh, one, I'm, I'm, I'm with sin, I, um, I'm not the Creator of the world, and two, I don't absorb this sin. And then, whereas you're talking about the Creator of the universe laying down His life for His creation and then, absor and then absorbing the sins of the world. So 
And I think in these two sessions, Tommy is trying to get across this whole idea that like this is something that's very Christ and His holiness and His crucifixion is something that is very, very monumental. Uh, and yeah. yeah. Anything more? Any other questions or thoughts? I was always thinking about how does that imply for us in our own reason. I know I'm just sure, thinking sure. about whatever you say and trying to think, I'm trying to see, okay, so now I know this. So in my life, what then shall I? Yeah. Well, I think do? the crucifixion of Christ should always be relevant in our life, right? And so if it's something like buying gas, that's not to say that when you purchase gas, you're supposed to think about the crucifixion of Christ, but that uh, the one that that aspect of Christianity is always relevant, will, should always be relevant in our lives. And so, um, uh, it is. In I think my point was that it is like the ultimate display of love, right? The ultimate display of love that I can show to you is me laying down my life for you. Then, uh, so much greater is it that the Creator of the universe would lay down His life for us. And so, it's an understanding of the gravity of love. And in terms of application, it's like. Um, when we live out when we live out our daily lives, um, the most that we can do for for a, a brother, the the closest um, and most complete way that we can display our love is uh, dying for somebody else. That we have to always keep in mind that what Jesus has done for us is so much better than anything we can do for, for a brother or sister in Christ. Not to say that we shouldn't do anything, but. Just putting it into perspective. So, and I'm, I may have gone a different direction, but okay. what I, but what I thought was so sure. when I when I when I feel my pangs, I was so filled with God's love or something like that, or or what I heard, what you're saying is Online. like everything that I do, I keep my mind, my state of mind, in a in a clear awareness that I'm a sinner. Yeah, I mean, well, is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, perhaps when you fill your gas, it's not like you know. It's obviously it seems like you know it's probably not a huge contribution that you're giving to the world or to your car or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it, you know, but in our daily lives, we do have more impact. Right, but too, we, right, our role in life is not to fill gas. Right. Our role in life is to glorify God, as Tommy said. And so, um, I'm not sure how. Um, I'm not sure how. Compromise that example, <laughs> but, yeah. but I think I, I, I think have to take a point that, that is um, you know, one thing I heard from what you're saying is that in everything we do, we always hope to Christ has died for us and for us. I think I think that's a right, right. right. That, that's sort of pointing away that okay, how then shall we live? This is one of the ways that we should. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think that's a really good point. Yeah. 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 Uh, Frankie Brad, did you want to? Is it is your name Frank? What's your name? I'm, yeah. Me? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Cozy. Uh, I forgot the real name. Cozy. Uh, K O S Z U. But you can think of it as C S I. Okay. Yeah. Seems like maybe you had some uh, uh, a thought too. Did you talk about how how we should then live? Did, did did you get to add what you were hoping to bring out on that? No, no, no. I was just trying to make connections to everyday life. So Aaron, were you going to say something? No. Okay. And Jonathan wanted to say something. Okay. Oh, I, was, I, I was just going to summarize what you were saying, but okay. it was um, it's time to wrap up. It's time to wrap up. You have us, oh, but you're good. You felt like that was clear. I thought you, you know, I was basically saying, I think what you was trying to get at is that we can be God glorifying and Every manner, even when gassing up. Right. Um, right. He, 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 the example is never about gas. He just wants to yeah. you know, just make something just to show God. Yeah. 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 It's never. Yeah. Unleaded. 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 <laughs> <laughs> could we, uh, let's see, could we sir, turn to, uh, I know it's time to go. We're seeing people get in line real quickly, uh, end up on God's word. When I, when I, I may misread Tommy or something, but when I think of, Perhaps what the this focus in this message was, uh, you know, we're 
like Yale year after year, I, the, the sense I believe is that many, many uh, believers, but we know that uh, there's always going to be those who have not yet come to Christ. And I, I, I sense of a message like this is a little bit, probably a tad bit more evangelistic oriented. Uh, and uh, this idea of um, if we have not trusted Christ yet, have we recognized the depth of my sin, the need of my uh, of a Savior? Uh, it's not like I just need a little push in the right direction. No, I'm I'm totally uh, in need of a Savior. So just the idea of um, of this, even even in this case, the illustration uh, maybe on this post side of the cross, David. David is someone who. I would say knew God, a relationship with God, trusted Him, and yet He did sin even in that way. And there's Psalm 32. Let me read it. We'll pray and then move on. But uh, how blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered? How blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit? When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted away through, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was drained away as with the fever heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you and my iniquity I did not hide. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let everyone who is godly pray to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, with whose trappings include bit and bridle to hold them in check. Otherwise, they will not come near to you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but who trust in the Lord. Loving kindness shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones, and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. Let me pray briefly. Lord God, we praise you. Thank you. Thank you for this morning. Thank, thank you for this message. Uh, Lord, those who um, are able to uh, say, Abba, Father, Heavenly Father, if those born again by your Spirit, uh, knowing sin is forgiven and the relationship with you is established, we know that there are still events and will be in our lives where we repent, we uh, repent of uh, missteps of sin, of going our own way. Thank you for that forgiveness. Thank you that the cross has always been as big as it will ever be. Help us to see that, to rejoice, and find restoration uh, in you, Father, for any of this conference, any here that uh, have yet to reach that point, to have uh, repented of uh, just a uh, seeking their own way of a back turned upon you, grant them the awareness of, of, of your drawing, of your love, of the work you've done. We do pray for the afternoon ahead. I uh, pray that it would be honoring to you in whatever we do. Uh, in our relationships, uh, bring, uh, allow us to encourage one another, uh, to look for the encouragement we need. And uh, if our time is spent in sport, thank you for the bodies you've given us and the fun of uh, that time of activity. Thank you now for this lunch. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Charlie, all right, thank you. Do you use Verizon or Sprint? Neither. Which one? Where's your carrier? AT&T. Really? Yeah. AT&T? You should get Verizon. Verizon? Not we are in agreement. Don't let us die. Don't let us die.
one hour and two minutes and 46 seconds. 47 seconds. One hour and two minutes and 49 what, what, seconds. What do you want this for? Uh, I want to see how many hours this thing can hold. It's got 128 gigabytes. It's the uh, really iPhone says, 6 Plus. Really says so far, I've recorded seven hours of Lake Yale. I heard. I heard it was good. So far, I've recorded six, seven hours of Lake Yale. And I don't know. My battery is definitely dying. But I think it can hold 16 hours, maybe 14 hours. And after Lake Yale tomorrow, I'm going to Magic Kingdom with my mom. This way, this way. I'm going to Magic Kingdom with my mom. Do you want to see the pictures of me with the princesses? No. <laughs> I gotta go to the park first and put this green tea back in the park. I'm going to find out the park for the registration post. Next. The 2010 Prius. You still drive the red car? Nope. That was a long time ago. What car do you have now? A better car. What's the name of the car? I haven't given him a name. Come on, just tell me the name of the car. I haven't given a name yet. So you don't have the red car anymore? Nope. When did you sell it? A well, year ago? When did you sell it? A year ago? What year was that? No. What year was that car? That red the car? car? Yeah, that red uh, Honda whatever. How, what year was it? It's like... What year was 2001, it? 2002. What year was it? What year was it? Yeah. Oh, what year was it? I don't know. 2001 or something. Okay, that's an old, old car. Yeah. So now what year do you have? What year do you have? What year do you have? 2010. 2010. What year do you have? It's a 2010 Prius, silver. Yeah. It gets 52 miles a gallon. I've had it that's for good. about a year. What, what yeah, year do you have? What, what year is your car now? 2010. Is it better than 2010? Not that, it's not that recent. What year is your car since so you so sold the uh, old one? What year is your car? What, what, kind of, what year is the car that you have now? 2009, I think. 2009? Maybe. Really? You've worked for three years, right? You should have. You should be able to get a car. Yeah, if you have a car, it works really good. What year is it? I just told you, 10. 2009. 2009, right? I think pretty sure it's 2009. You yeah. think it's 2009? What color is it? I don't care if you throw it in. I just well, I can just show it to you later. What, what color is it? Just tell me. Just Why? Tell me you, you're like so interested to know about my color. I want to know the color, color, then I'll stop loving you. Just tell me the color. I think it's, a, it's gray. It's like gray, silver color. So it's not red anymore. It's gray? It's not red anymore. You don't have that color anymore. Is it a no. Honda? No, it's not a Honda. Is it a Toyota? Is it okay, a Toyota? So you seem very interested in my car. I can I, just show it to you. Where is it? What? Where is it? Is I it park, it's in the cabin. I'll show it to you later. Yeah, I know you will. You'll forget to. If you, okay, will, yeah. if you want to, you can bug me about it again. I'll show it to you. <laughs> so what year is it? 2009, right? Or 2010? Then, you have to ask me so many times. I think I've told But you can't just give me a straight answer. I mean, if you, don't, if you still have your old car, it's fine. I don't have my old car anymore. I told you, you I sold, sold it. it. Yeah. And you have a 2010, right? You don't listen, do you? Is it 2009 or 2010? You, keep, you don't tell me. Just tell I told me you now. 2009. 2009. No, it's 2010. <laughs> You're blowing my head up. <laughs> so, what kind of car? Is it Toyota or Honda? No. Is it Toyota or Honda? No. How about... Please tell me. Is it, is it Mercedes-Benz or BMW? It's like, it's like a, a Corvette. No. <laughs> Just kidding. It doesn't matter. <laughs> a two-door Corvette? You can't drive that. No, you're right. I don't have a what, Corvette. What kind of car? Is it Honda or a Toyota? Is it a Honda still or a Cor is it a Honda or a, Cor a Toyota? Why? Uh, why are you so interested? In that? I can just show it to you. Is it a Lexus? Why are you so interested in is knowing? It a Lexus? Why are you so interested in knowing? Why are you so interested in knowing? This, this is what you sound like. Why are you, why are you so interested in knowing? Why are you so interested in knowing? I, I, I give you ten seconds to answer and you don't answer. I don't. I don't ask that fast. Yeah, you're like, yeah. What, 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 what color is it? What year is it? What year is it? What year is it? Like is it 2009? I don't 2010? have that much patience. Just tell me what. What's the? 2009. 2009. Is it a Toyota or is it a Cor no, no, or is it a Honda? It's neither. It's a Nissan. It's a Nissan. Yes. Is it a Pathfinder? Okay. Then I can just show you my car. When did you get it? A year ago. Oh. When did you get it? I got it a year ago. You got it a year ago. Yes. It's 2009. Why don't you get it 2012 or something? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You gotta go above. It doesn't matter then. Okay. It's more respectable. 2009 is kind of 09. It's not a 10 or 11 or 12. That was okay. 
I'm planning to get a brand new Prius 20, 2016 next year. Okay, nice. It's Very gonna be twenty four thousand dollars. We went to several dealerships. We're gonna get a new Prius for twenty four thousand dollars probably next year. I don't know. Whatever you feel like. We just have only one car now. We sold the other two cars that you saw before, like a long time ago. The 1994 Corolla, 1994 Corolla, and the 1994 uh, Camry. It's been sold for fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars for one car, and fourteen fifty for the other car. So we got like uh, uh, two thousand nine hundred fifty dollars cash. And they live around us too. And we see the car usually is around us sometimes. That's good. You got a Nissan, right? Whoa, Jay! Okay, is it a Pathfinder? It took a long time processing. What kind of car is it? A Nissan. This is just just this, uh, I'll give you 20, 20 guesses. Let's I don't just guess them. So, because you've been recording all these hours. I don't, I don't know why you're doing. I don't. I don't know why you're doing this. I can't. I, if I go to Magic Kingdom, I'm probably going to be zero. Okay. What no, is the? I mean, I what, is, what is the model? Okay. Because you're going to be asking. What is the model? Okay, I'll tell you everything I know about this car. It's a what gray is the Nissan 2009 car. And what model is it? Nick is uh, Nissan, right? Altima. Nissan Altima. Okay, Nissan. Okay. So okay, okay. 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 Stop asking me, I'll tell you everything I know about the car. Okay. Is it paid off? Stop, stop asking me questions, I'll is tell you it, everything. Okay, is it paid know. off? Did you pay it off or is it a loan? I'm not gonna tell you if you stop if you don't Is it paid off? I know it's not a new car, it's a used car. What do you really wanna know? It's probably eighteen thousand dollars or sixteen thousand What do you really wanna know? Is it a loan or did you pay it off? Is it paid off? None of your business. Is it paid off? None of your business. You're doing a loan? None of your business. Don't do loans. None of your business. They're gonna trick you. If it's sixteen thousand dollars, you do a loan on that, it's only nineteen point five. You're you're out three thousand five hundred dollars. Then eventually get you that much money. Depending if it's a three year, five year or six year. Just pay with cash. Twenty four thousand dollars. That's what a Prius car. A Prius gets 52 miles a gallon. Yours gets about 25 or 26 or 30, right? Nissan Altima? Nissan, I think, is made in Japan, right? I don't know. I feel like most of that is here. Probably. Probably. Sounds like a Japanese name. Nissan Japan. We went dumpster diving the next day. Sorry, I'm gonna put this in my car. Okay. And then I'm put this in my car. Okay. Okay. Okay.